What's up creators, Madi B here. Welcome back to my channel where I share tips and tricks on how to get your message to the masses using media. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to, you can publish your book on Amazon. So here we are on Amazon. You are going to create an account. Once you create your account, you're going to see, you're gonna to go to kdp.amazon.com. If you already have an Amazon account, you don't have to um, sign up. You could just sign in. But publishing it, uh, that's not your thing. I love Amazon because they kind of help you get started. So you're going to sign into your Amazon account. If you don't have an Amazon account, sign up for one. And it's going to take me to this page. Now, I have books already published, so they're all listed here below. Okay, now you're not going to have anything below here, so you're going to start here. Create a new title. You can start with a Kindle book if you don't want to do a paperback. You can start here. I got to tell you, the Kindle book is not easy to do. Um, it sounds easy, but it is not. And I'm going to do a separate class on how to get uh, upload a Kindle version because it's all about formatting your Kindle version. And it definitely takes a lot more steps than just doing a paperback. So you're going to, you can upload your manuscript. If you have a children's book or educational content or comics, you can get started with Kindle content creation tools here. You're gonna create your book cover. You can use their online cover creator, as I mentioned, or you can upload your own. You're gonna choose your description, your keywords, and your categories, important. ISBN, you can get a free ISBN to publish your paperback. Kindles do not need one. And then they give you tips on how ISBN works. So here, I'm gonna go down to this book. So I'm just gonna click on continue setup. No, not with this one. Let's go to this one, continue setup. This is a book that is already existing. It's already live. You can see live on Amazon. Once you make uh, changes to your book, it will, it will not be live, but as soon as it's approved, then it will be live. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna create the details. Your book is in English. It's given me the no, do not, <laughs> I cannot touch this right now because it's already been published. You're gonna enter your title as it appears on your book cover. The book title must match your book cover, very important, because if they don't match, your book will be rejected. Um, you cannot catfish your book. Unleash Your Divine Design was my title. Um, the book title cannot be edited after your book has been published, very important. So if you are not totally sold on a cover of your book, um, does, uh, as far as the title of your book. Do not publish your book yet. You can keep it as a draft. And then your tagline. Enter the information. Is it a series or is just a one-time book? If it's a series, you can write your series information, series number one, series two. That's great for fiction books. If they have like a Chronicles, thing and it's five books all together but they're only releasing the first book you can put one there and put the title of the that first book there okay you can provide an edition if you did multiple editions um in other words you did an update to your book which i'm going to do for my publish it book i have to update it because there were a lot of changes to the publishing platform i used to use uh, create space. Well, a lot of us used to use create space. It was owned by Amazon, but Amazon got rid of create space. And they um, really, I, I think they just bought it out. So which is why now you have to go publish your book through Amazon KDP. All right, so you're going to put the author information here. You are the author, you're the primary author or contributor. Um, you can add additional contributors here. So here, see, like you have the editor, the contributor, the author. And then here's where you're gonna put in your description. You can, 
copy and paste it. If you've already written your description in a Word document, you can paste it here. I own the copyright and I hold the necessary publishing rights. In other words, you didn't copy and paste this book. You didn't use somebody else's information. This is not a, uh, a book that you're recycling. You actually own the copyrights of this book. That doesn't mean that you, you didn't hire a ghostwriter. Now, a ghostwriter um, can be hired. Let's say you have an idea for a book. You don't want to write it. Um, you don't have the time to write it. You want to hire someone to write the book for you, and you want to put your name on it. Uh, of course, I don't recommend that, but a lot of people do it, and they make money from doing it. I don't know how you could release a book, but anyway, um, it's being done. So in other words, if you want to write a book about how to market your book and you hire someone to, who knows about how to market a book and you hire them to write a book about how to market the book, they're considered a ghostwriter. You pay them um, an amount, but you don't have to give them the, the copyright. You don't have to give them author credit for it. It's your book because you hired them as a ghostwriter. So their content is now your content. It's pretty much like you purchased a song from Sony or I was the ghostwriter. I wrote the song, but I sold my lyrics, my song and, you know, to Sony music. Sony now owns the rights to that music. I no longer, I gave up all my rights when I sold it to Sony. Okay. So this is pretty much that you own the copyright, you hold the necessary. If this is a public domain work, let's say this was a book written over a hundred years ago, like Think and Grow Rich, um, and you put that in your book, it is now a public domain book. And what happens is you lose your publishing. You select this option if you're publishing a public domain book. Keep in mind that the duration of the copyright varies between countries. So if your books, if your book is in the public domain in one country, but not another, you must identify your territory. Very important with that, okay? But for now, we're selling, we're selling our own books. Uh, choose seven keywords that describe your book. So here you're going to write down seven keywords. Now, these keywords are important. I'm still learning how to use keywords, to be honest. Once, you know, you think you got it and then you don't. So I just updated my um, keywords yesterday. And this book has been out for, I don't know, since 2014. Um, but you want to, you get, so in other words, if someone types in Amazon or types into Google, how to set goals for the new year, your book could possibly um, show up on that search. So that's what these are for, keywords. Categories, really important. You can choose up to two categories with Amazon. Your category is, a, is the section of the Amazon site where users can find your book. If your book is about finances, you don't want to put your book in, in a psychology category um, uh, or like a abuse recovery category because it's about finance. So Placing your categories is really important. You don't want to catfish people either and put your category in the wrong category just so you can get higher, you know, um, search possibilities. It's important to put the category to what you want to, you want, okay, this is really important because this is going to determine uh, what type of person is going to be buying your book and interested in your book. You're not going to be a top seller in Amazon if your book is listed in the wrong category because people that are searching for, you know, um, abuse recovery books and your book shows up, that's a false category because I don't want to know about finances. I want to know about how to heal my heart again, you know, so um, you, wa you want to make sure your category is, is correct because this will affect your book sales. And it will affect Amazon promoting your book because it's going to the wrong uh, 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 market audience, okay? Does this book contain language, situation, or images that are inappropriate to children? No. Save and continue. It's saving everything that you put in there. Save and continue. You guys with me? All right. Save successful. Now it's going, we were on this tab. Now we're on the paperback content tab. 
So here, ISBN. I created, I used the ISBN when I had CreateSpace. So it just transferred my ISBN that was on CreateSpace over to KDP. Um, all, a lot of my books were transferred from CreateSpace because that's where I published the beginning, you know, the first few of my books um, were created on CreateSpace before they did the switch over. Uh, I believe they did it last year. So for titles previously published on CreateSpace, it's important to use the same 13 digit number. It allows them to transfer all the data, but that doesn't matter to you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use a free, you're gonna be able to use um, the ISBN for free with uh, Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Enter the date on which your book was published. This was published in 2015, May of 2015. However, um, you don't put anything here because it'll automatically put the date on when your book is published. Because remember, you cannot do pre-orders on um, Amazon. Now, print options. Do you want black and white interior with white paper? Do you want cream paper? Do you want a color interior with, with white paper? Remember, if your book is in color, it's going to cost more. So this, all these determine the pricing of your book. I like just white paper. Cream paper is good for um, fiction books. That's a lot of reading. Um, you cannot change any of this once your book has been published, so it's important to get it right the first time. Trim size. This is an 8 by 10 book. You can select any size of your book. If you're doing a 6 by 9 book, um, if you're doing a, so this is the interior, right? Yes. So you're going to make sure that your interior um, is the right size. What are your bleed settings? No bleed or bleed. Bleed is allows printing off of the edge of the page. It's used to support images and illustrations. So if you have, um, you know, charts or pictures or graphs or things like that in your book, you might want to use bleed, but it's only for PDF or no bleed if you're just using a regular wording. Matte or glossy. This act, this book is glossy, um, but you can choose matte or glossy. And here's where you upload your manuscript. So now that you have, you did all that you did and you're you made your, your, your formatting, you formatted your document. Now you have your Word document and you want to upload it here. So you obviously you're going to save your uh, document onto your computer so you can be able to upload it here. Um, click this, browse wherever your, your document is, and then you upload it. Here is where you're going to put your book cover. I created my own book cover, so I just uploaded my cover. However, you can use Cover Creator with Amazon, which is a free service, to upload your book cover. When you click on this, it's going to show you a preview of what your book looks like. And then you can determine whether this cover is going to work for you or not. If you need to make adjustments to the cover, which that has happened to me quite a few times. And then you're going to save and continue. Let's see. Let's launch. Amazon, where are you? Okay, there we go. My um, book uploaded. And this is the front and back cover. So I use the, the template from CreateSpace um, to upload my picture here. And, because, and you see here's my ISBN. So when I click Next, it's going to show me the interior of my book. Here's a table of contents, acknowledgments, and the pre preface, chapter one. So here we go. You have, see, yeah, I made it, I tried to make it appealing. Got quotes in there. I've got bullet points, checklist. Okay. So approve. I approved it. Or I exit it. If I saw some errors, I can exit, print pre previewer, and upload a new one. Or I could just approve it, and I approved it. So save and continue.
Then it's going to take me to the third tab. This is where we're going to talk pricing and territories. So here, select the territories which you want you hold distribution. You can choose individual ones or you can go worldwide. Now, pricing and royalty. So this is where the royalty comes into play. The rates, you see the 60 and the 40%. Um, if you own full rights to the book, it's you're the, the only author, the 100% author that we talked about earlier, then you're going to get 60% royalty. <clears throat> if it's a public domain, if you're copywriting some other old book or you have like Think and Grow Rich in your book, um, then it's going to be 40% royalty that you get. Everything else goes to the public domain. <clears throat> so this is the cost of printing my book, $3.71. Even though my book is listed at $14.99, the royalty is only $5.29 because I'm paying for the distribution, I'm paying, paying for the printing. So this is where the cost comes into play. Yes, I didn't have to pay for my book up front, but I pay in the, in the back end. So every time a book is sold, I will only get $5. I will get $5.29. That's not only, it's great. So I can up my price here to let's say $17.99. When I change that, it automatically updates my royalty. So now at 60%, I would now earn $7.09 for every book sold. Expanded distribution, you can reach more readers. So expanded distribution just means that you can use online real to real retailers, libraries, um, bookstores will sell your books, um, different you know, institutions, academics, even a college might pick up your book. So I always choose expanded distribution. And <clears throat> expanded distribution, sorry, it gives you 40%. You get a less royalty um, because of the expanded distribution. Now, other marketplaces, if you're selling on Amazon UK, they automatically change the price for you. In the Great British Pound, your book is $13.75. You would make $5.17 royalty with the expand um, the UK. So if you have clients in France, in Spain, Japan, Canada, UK, they can purchase your book and these are your royalties. <clears throat> and they convert it for you, which is nice. Um, and then you're going to, you can go here, requ request printed proof of your book. So you can actually um, approve your book, publish it, or request. This is the only time you can requ request, blah, get, the, get it out. You can only request printed proofs at this time. Once you hit that publish button, you no longer can get a proof copy. Now the proof copy will come with the word proof on it. So you won't be able to resell those. So, you know, it's, it's no difference from a proof copy to an actual legit copy as far as pricing is concerned. It's still gonna cost you $3.71 to purchase your book. Or you can order author copies once your book has been um, set to live. So in other words, you won't have to pay the 14 or 17.99. You would only pay $3.71 for a printed copy. And then you can sell your books at conferences, at events, at stores. It's totally in your corner. Online, like I do. I have where if you purchase a book from me, a signed copy, I have actual physical copies of the book that I will sign and I mail it to the, per the person that purchased my book. And then you just hit publish your paperback book, or you could save it as a draft. If you need to go back, make changes, you can go back to your content before you publish your book. Once you publish your paperback book, it's gonna give you a message. I would, re I would order a proof copy of your book as well, 
because sometimes there are mistakes that you don't you're not aware of that you want to be able to fix when you get the actual printed book. Um, so it's here it updated my my price. They're going to review my book to make sure it could take up to 72 hours to be available live on Amazon. And then it encourages you to start your Kindle ebook. Amazon will take your book and change it into an ebook for you, but because this book has a lot of graphics and stuff, it's kind of, it's a little more tedious and difficult. So there you go. All right, so congratulations, guys. You made it through the publishing uh, masterclass, book publishing masterclass. It was an honor to be with you today. I hope you got a lot of information from this. Um, if you have any questions, if there was something that you wanted me to expound on, please, please, please send me an email or post a question in the group. This is a private group all just for you who are, um, you know, learning, wanting to get your book published. Well, guys, I hope you got some great information from the video. And if you really want to know how to create your book, I go into further detail, taking you step by step in my Authorship 101 course. So check out the description below, follow the link to get more information and details on how to get that done. I look forward to seeing you there and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to get more tips and tricks on how to get your message to the masses using media.